applications, if you will indulge me. I am just obsessed with them lately um, and happy to talk a little bit more about the hows and the whys after. Um, these are all bespoke data authentications, so it's not like just running data through a single piece of software and like a factory kind of popping out results. Um, they're bespoke in the sense that each data set has a different science story and each data set has a very unique set of data, the way they look, the way they are. Um, and so each one we've been finding really has its own story that needs to be told in its own way. Um, and so I think what's interesting as you're listening through these examples, you'll hear very different examples of sound. So this next piece was one of the first ones that we ever did. It's probably still to this day one of my favorites because I actually worked on this image, putting it together, I want to say back in 2008, 2009. And then when I you know, heard it back in 2020, it just made the data new and exciting you know, for me all over again. So right now we're going to listen to the Galactic Center. So see, no more exploded stars like I promised. We're going to move away. All right, there might be a few exploded stars in here, but they're tiny little blips, so I will not talk about them. Mostly we're going to be um, listening to all of this sort of downtown area around the galactic center of our Milky Way galaxy. We're going to be exploring this inner 400 light year span. As we get closer and closer to the area on the right where Sagittarius A star, the supermassive black hole actually resides, you'll hear a crescendo as all of that high energy data really sort of starts popping. Uh, so there are three different layers of information in this sonification and in this image. We've got the lowest energy uh, material from the Spitzer Space Telescope. We've got the sort of mid-range energy from the Hubble Space Telescope. That's in the yellows. The Spitzer is in the red. And then the blues are, and the purples, are the highest energy material from Chandra. And so the sounds are sort of similarly interspersed. The lowest energy material from Spitzer is the piano. The sort of medium energy material from Hubble is this like plucky violin sound. And then the highest energy from the X-ray telescope is like a glockenspiel um, type of sound. And so just to yeah, be on the lookout or the listen out uh, for that supermassive black hole. Here we go. data set. Uh, as you can tell from the visual, it is very dense. There is a lot going on. That beautiful filamentary structure from Hubble, um, that sort of, you know, cloudy, gassy, red material that you're seeing from Spitzer, and then all of those tiny sources from Hubble, as well as some of the diffuse X-ray emission that you're seeing as that sort of nebulous, um, bluish, purplish kind of material. It's a lot to look at, and it's a lot to listen to, but when you listen to it, the interplay of the three different instruments is, I think, um, pretty evident in certain locations. You can really hear how the material through sound is complementing each 